Welcome to Old Soul, New Soul, Astrology with Robert Glasscock. Thomas Miller here. We're going to talk horary astrology. That's a big word. It's where you literally can ask the chart at any time a question, and if you meet certain criteria, the chart will answer. Is our life fated or do we have free will? <laughs> it's an amazing technique. It's really how I got acquainted with Robert was through some horary practicums that he was doing through Kepler College, and I use it now all the time. Robert, you have a classic story about horary and a vehicle that got, that is just a an incredible example of how you can use this fascinating technique. Well, it's a very practical use of it. And, uh, well, I'll just tell you the story. This was on Christmas Eve Eve of 2012. And I was driving a probably 16 to 18-year-old Jeep Grand Cherokee at that point. And I was headed over to a Christmas Eve Eve party. And I began to head up a, a hill here in town, and suddenly I had nothing, no power steering, nothing. Fortunately, I had enough momentum up that I was able to turn off of this thoroughfare and into a neighborhood and coast down into the residential neighborhood and stopped by a hedge. And I called a towing service because I thought, well, I'll have to tow this in. It's Christmas Eve Eve. So my mechanic is not, it was a Sunday, as I recall. And um, he's not going to be open. So I need to call him at home and let him know I'm dropping this car off there. So I, I called the, the towing place. And then I thought, let me look at this. Is this going to cost me an arm and a leg? What's wrong with this car? When am I going to get it back? Those kinds of very practical questions. So I set up this, this event chart or orary chart to see what it was. And it's pretty straightforward. It's the health of the car. So if you know where cars are ruled in a horoscope, which is the third house, that's the car. The car's health is the sixth from the third which is the eighth house in the original chart. And in that house was Neptune in Pisces. Before you go further, would yeah. you just explain in a little bit more detail what you just did there, the sixth from the third? So the reason I'm looking at the sixth from the third is called derivative houses. So if you, if you know what rules the car, which is the third house in this chart, what you're curious about, the car just broke down. It's having health troubles. Well, the sixth house from anything rules the health of that thing. So your own health is ruled by your sixth house at birth. Your spouse's health is ruled by your 12th house, their sixth house, and so on. So the health of the car would be six houses away from the third house, which is the original eighth house in the horoscope, but it, it, it's the sixth, it's the health of the, of the car. And the first thing I saw there was Neptune in Pisces, which is oil. And I thought, well, that's very interesting. Um, or maybe the gasoline lines, because those are also ruled by Neptune in Pisces. Maybe fuel lines, gasoline. So, so I'm, I'm thinking, well, is this going to cost me an arm and a leg? That was my next thing. And I'm looking at this this horary chart, and I'm thinking, well, no, it doesn't look like it's going to cost me very much money. But it's going to take 10 days, according to this chart. Now, there are definite rules for this in horary astrology because of the, the ruler of the situation and the ruler of its outcome and what kind of an aspect they make and how many degrees apart and so on. But it said it would be about 10 days and I'm waiting and waiting. I waited for an hour, 90 minutes, maybe for the tow truck to come thinking how I don't get this. It says it's not going to be expensive. So we towed the car. I called my mechanic and all as well <clears throat> that night. 
we had an ice storm in the city that shut down power completely for four days. So nobody had any power. <laughs> and I wound up staying with my host for two nights and the in interior temperature was 26 degrees. Uh, finally, we got power back. But meanwhile, at my mechanics, they could not work on any cars for about one week. And when they were finally able to work on the cars again, I got a call from the can. It's your fuel pump. It's going to be $128 or something. And that's what it was. And it, sure enough, it was 10 days after. So that's one example of how I use orary for, my, for myself. I can give you more. <laughs> Well, I understand car themes for you work pretty good in horror area. I think you. <laughs> yes, they do. Do you have another? <laughs> I do have another one. Now, after the Jeep, I started leasing a, a Honda Civic because I had leased cars in the past, and I just I don't want to have be stuck with a major repair. And under a lease, you're covered. So I had a three year lease on this Honda. And about a year and a half into that lease, I got a letter from the Honda Corporation saying, well, because you're a preferred customer, who isn't, uh, we, we have this special offer. You can come in today and drive off. You're only a year and a half into this three-year lease, but you can drive off today in a new 2016 Honda for $0 down. All right. So I got online and I checked out these early termination lease offers. And it turns out, depending on how you drive and how long you keep a car, they can actually be good for the consumer. And I, I do keep cars for a long time. So I thought, well, all right, <clears throat> this looks good. And my next question to myself is, should I lease this or buy it? And it flat was very clear. No, do not lease it. Yes, buy it. So I went down the next day and did the deal and while i'm waiting for uh mo was the the finance guy with i don't know six people working for him they were working up the paperwork and so he came out with the paperwork and because he knew me uh he he had the paperwork covered up with a manila uh file folder he said just sign here and and he had somebody with him and i said what the, am i signing away the rights to my newborn what what's going he laughed just sign it just all right, then I had to go into the private office with the finance guy, and he sits down and looks over this. He says, why are you leasing this? And I said, well, Mo set it up this way. It's, I don't know, some kind of special lease, because basically I don't want to get stuck with major repairs. And he asked me about my driving habits. And then he says, you don't want to lease this car. You want to buy it. Well, I already knew this from astrology. And he said, here's what we can do. I can fold in a 10-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, which frankly is even better than the standard factory warranty. So you'll be covered. And we'll just fold it in the price of the car. And I said, done. That's all I needed to know. So when I'm faced with those kinds of decisions, Thomas, I instantly want to consult astrology just to see what its input is. I don't have to take it. I don't have to follow it, but I have found over time when I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I do follow it. I do too. And it's been an amazing and learning these techniques from you in the practicum classes has been just incredible. I think we're going to do something on Horary. Robert and I are incubating an idea. So if you're interested in that, stand by because I think we're going to have some stuff coming up in the near future. What was it in that second chart? Where did you look for, should I buy or should I lease? Well, the question was not about a car. Uh, should I buy or lease? That becomes, and really the, the initial question in that chart, Thomas, was, is this early termination offer from Honda good for me? And by meaning good, I mean financially in terms of value. So my question was totally about the second house, about money, not about the car, not about the quality. I knew the quality was great with Honda. It wasn't about that. 
it was initially, is this, should I accept this early termination offer? And if so, should I le- buy it or see, should I lease it? So really there were three questions in one. And the first question concerned this early termination lease and is it good for me financially to accept it? And so you look to the second house and then you look to the opposite house and see the, the sign on that. And then you take the rulers of each of those two houses because the house opposite the one that rules the question rules the immediate outcome. And if that ruler and the ruler of the question form a positive aspect or a conjunction, sex, style, or trine, the answer is yes. If they form a square or an opposition, the answer is no. Very simple, and you only use Chaldean plants. This is all out of Mark Edmund Jones, which is still, to me, the best astrology. Well, everybody goes back to William Lilly, which is fine, but this is 400 years later, and we've learned a lot in 400 years. Mark Edmund Jones, to me, still has done the best job of uh, explaining what the houses rule and why they rule it, not just arbitrarily, here's what this house rules, but why. So in that chart, the second house, I got a yes, absolutely take advantage of this offer. And the next question is the third house from the first question. It's like a sibling question, which indeed these were. This was a serial option question. I had a series of three things. Do I take advantage of this early termination offer? And if I do, if the answer is yes, which it was, then the next question becomes the third from the second, which is the fourth house in the original chart. And that question was, should I buy it? And the rulers of the fourth and the rulers of the tenth made a hard aspect, which the answer was no. So then I went to the next question, which is the third from the fourth or the sixth house. And that was a straight yes. So that's, in a nutshell, how that works. And it, for a lot of questions like this, it can be pretty simple. It gets tricky. Um, I'm thinking of a situation, Thomas, a woman had written me in the middle of the night. I was about one in the morning when I got this email from her. She was the mother of a student of mine. And she was writing me because they, her father, my student's grandfather, had been taken to the hospital, he had a massive stroke. And the doctors wanted to take him off of food and liquids for, I believe she said six days to see what was really going wrong with his brain. And her brother's brother and sister were in agreement with the doctor. She was not, she was afraid that that would kill him. And she said, can you see anything? I'll be happy to find his birth certificate if if you need that. Well, to me, it was such an urgent question. I didn't need his birth certificate uh, because I set up an orary chart. And this is what's so fascinating to me, Thomas, these orary charts. I set this chart up for where I am, not where she was in Seattle, but where I am, because the, uh, the interpretation and understanding of the horoscope takes place between the astrologer's ears, not the querent's ears. So I set that chart up for me, and it said that this man would likely die in about three to four days. So I wrote her back, and I had also said a lot of other things, which I explained to her. I explained that according to this chart, of all of his children, his three children, she was the one that was closest to his heart. And he knew that she wasn't ready to let him go yet. And that was really the only reason he was hanging on. And I suggested to her, if it were me, I said, I would put him He's in ICU now, so you you don't put him in hospice necessarily because, but if you can put him in a a hospice situation, I would maybe get one of those Japanese water fountains, tabletop fountains, just so there'll be a trickling sound in there in the background for him to hear because it's wonderfully relaxing and also for the caregivers. And I said, I expect that he is likely to, to be gone in about three to four days. And sure enough, about a week later, his daughter, my student, her daughter, my student wrote to tell me, granddad died three and a half days later. I still don't see how you did that without his birth horoscope, but you were beyond accurate. 
And that's the power of Warari, because what you're doing is taking a snapshot of space-time in relation, in context of a certain question. So the Quarant is shown at the first house. Her father is shown at the fourth house. His death is shown at his eighth house, which is the original 11th. And you go from there. And you just read the alphabet of the solar system, and you get that answer and that timing. Some charts are not that clear because some situations are not that clear. It's the same in a doctor's office. Some illnesses and conditions are very clear and some are very puzzling. And the, and the horoscope will show you that, the orary. So I do, I use it constantly uh, for myself and other people. It's a great way to look at these kinds of specific questions. So uh, do we have fate or free will? Absolute free will at every step of the way. I'm listen. In my experience, you you choose to be born. Your this existence is not forced on anybody. So the idea that you are physically incarnated was your choice to begin with. So it's all about free will. You certainly come into certain conditions, but those two are chosen for whatever reasons. This is a very tough subject because how can you say someone is born deformed for a reason? Well. That's a hard question. But believe me, you look at someone like Stephen Hawking, for example, who was born with his ALS genetic condition. Um, and he, again, had to live with how did he adjust? So his free will, when he finally couldn't even move, all he could do was puff on a tube. He still taught and wrote books and was the leading astrophysicist since uh, Einstein. So even though all he had to explore was his internal life, boy, did he explore it further than anybody else. You know, this is an interesting question in horary because I could see, and this is a very serious scenario, that probably somebody listening to this is actually facing right now. But you have a device or a technique here that can give you answers. And let's say that you feel or sense that something is not right with your body. And you ask the chart if it is cancer. Is that decision fated? Is that answer fated? Well, you can certainly look, at If, it, frankly, with health questions, I really do prefer to work with the natal chart and transits and solar arcs to it rather than orary. But in the situation with that woman, the only, and the only reason I did it was because of the urgency. She needed an answer. He needed an answer even though he was unconscious. Uh, so because of the urgency, Orary was fine with me because I do understand how this synthesis of the Quarant's mind and situation, the astrologer's mind, and the map of space-time at the instant that the astrologer understands the question. That's the birth of it, and it will absolutely give you answers. But for something like, do I have cancer? I would probably, not probably, if I could, I would read the natal chart for that. And absolutely, you can you can look and see. I did this a few years ago with a woman who was referred to be by another astrologer in California, and he doesn't read health. And she, listen to this, she uh, had a tumor on her neck. Uh, well, I've had it there for about six months. I haven't been to the doctor yet, but if it's cancer, I'm going to go to Mexico and get it treated by Laetrile. And I said to her, and I, the second she said a lump on her neck, I could see she was a, a Piscean. And I could see in her chart, not only is it malignant, but it's going to metastasize like crazy if she doesn't get take care of this. And I just flat told her, uh, going to Mexico for Laetrile will do nothing for you. This is what Steve McQueen tried. Laetrile is totally ineffective. So you're wasting your time. And I said, this is not benign. You need to get to your doctor. All right. So the next thing I know is I hear from her astrologer in California. He said, what on earth did you say to her? I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, how could you fail me and Bob fail me and astrology fail me? It's cancer. And I said, and he and I were on the phone together. And I said, I'm going to email you right now the letter that I sent to her, which he read while I waited on the phone. He said, well, this isn't bad at all. And I said, no, it isn't. Uh, and he said, do you think maybe she's bipolar? And I said, she could be. I don't know. She ultimately went down to the clinic. And not only did they give her Laetrile, but they did give her chemo 
So she went into remission. But the main thing was she got it taken care of. So that's I so, know it's a roundabout way of answering your question about health, because it, it frankly, on the on the most fundamental level, it doesn't matter what the horoscope says. Get to a doctor. Don't play around with this stuff. If you're sick, go to a doctor. Don't start consulting psychics and astrologers and putting it off. That's not caring for yourself. Wow, this this is fascinating stuff. And you know what? Let's do let's do a medical uh, segment coming up. How about if we drill down on what we were talking about? That'll be down the road, but we will okay. put that on the That's list. All right. It's okay. So back to wrapping up this fate versus free will. When you cast a chart about something that just happened, or you're a question that you're wanting to ask, you want to take it up to the sky for advice and time and space. You cast a chart. There is an answer right there in that chart. Is I'm going back to this same question. Is that fated or is that free will? And what if we do play around with the option of maybe not following that outcome? It's such a great question. And that to me is the whole point of astrology. It's absolutely the situation that you are brought as an astrologer. The question that you're brought is fate. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the situation, but they are. So you can take that as, all right, this is this, this moment, and it shows what has brought this situation and this client together, if you will. It also shows the likely development and the outcome of this situation, if they do nothing. And that's the big thing. Here's what's going to happen. And so you get a question like I had uh, I had a great job interview yesterday. Does it look like I'm going to be hired? All right. That's a straight up opportunity question. It hasn't been offered yet, but you can certainly look at the horoscope and see if it's likely that they will be offered it. But more than that, you can you can look at that horoscope and say, not only will you be offered this, but don't be on pins and needles. This is their offer is going to be delayed. Wait for them to come to you in another person's situation. Same question. The chart would say not only should you not wait you should contact them in a nice way with a business letter take some action to let them know how much you appreciated their time in the interview and look forward to hearing them so there's a different tactic there the the chart is say push or say wait so it's looking at the space-time indications for this particular question and situation and giving you advice on what to do. Some people would get very antsy and say, I, I just I want to call them and find out if, if I'm on the list or if I've been hired or been cut off the list or what. The chart will say, wait. Now, they don't have to wait. They can call and push if they want to and see what happens. But if, if I've learned the hard way over the years, if astrology says, wait, I'll wait. So that, uh, to me, is what free will is all about. Astrology forearms you with the likely outcome if you do nothing. It's the same in the natal chart. Every planet and sign and aspect have its po- has its positive side and negative side. And if you're unconscious, then especially with hard aspects, you may be living in a way that's not constructive, let's say. Whereas if you're made aware of the negative sides of these things and and the person will say, oh my gosh, that's true. I, I am that way. But you can change that and should. And when you do, then that changes the result you get. So astrology to me is a way out of fate or a way of understanding your fate, yeah, in, which in fact frees you from it. It gives you conscious choice, which is another way of saying a bit of control over what you can control the way you look, the way you speak, the way you act, if you're aware of it. One of the, and you can, of course, change the results. Yeah. One of the w- ways I like to describe astrology for myself is the Google map of our soul. <laughs> but <laughs> but I had uh, – this is on our Facebook group, so I've got Facebook group for our podcast. We ought to roll this in somehow, but it's Subconscious Mind Mastery and Fun Astrology podcast listeners. If those of you who have not found us on Facebook yet, we've got a wonderful community over there for Facebook – for podcast listeners only. But a lady got me on the on the Google Maps. This is a better one. So she had asked in our group, 
a question about a near miss accident a couple of nights ago. And she said that in, in working through the answer, she said, I feel like I've been in a mystery novel trying to make sense of my life. And my chart is a map to find my way back home. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. That yeah. kind of summarized astrology and Liz Green's take on Neptune being the symbolism of redemption. It is about finding our way back home the best way possible. Yes, it is. And horror area is a super powerful technique to use on a regular basis. You know, it's like the Google map. I'm in this new area, living in this new area. And one of the towns, the town where I have to go to, gro to get groceries is so unlike where I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's sandwiched in between two mountains and Tulsa was laid out, of course, in northeastern Oklahoma. And when they mapped the town out in the early 1900s, it's on an east-west, north-south grid. And yes. you, if you, as long as you know the concept of the street numbering, you know exactly where you are because it's all alphabetical, numerical, and in a grid. Well, this is winding roads up and down a mountain. And I mean, it is hard to find yourself around even in this little town. So when Google says turn right, and I'm going, yeah, but wait a minute, I'm going that way. Google knows what it's doing because there's train tracks there or whatever it is, right? And it has to get me around the obstacle. Well, that to me is like when, horror, when you're looking at something and you kind of like you're leaning in a direction in your conscious mind and the horary chart says, nope, here, you just follow it and you'll get there. Just like you wouldn't sit there and argue with the Google map. You're just going to do it. Turn right now. Then you turn right now in your life and you get a positive outcome. The thing that I love so much about Orary, Thomas, it not only tells you yes or no, and sometimes it, it's indeterminate, but it can also tell you why it's a no or why it's a yes. And once you realize, because it's, a map of space-time in the context of this question or this issue only. Uh, it's one of the, the kind of hard and fast rules in orary. Don't start making a life reading out of an orary chart. Stick to the question and focus on that because the more fear. Now, if, if during a reading about, let's say, a car breakdown, the client also mentions, oh, by the way, do you see anything about my marriage? All right. You have a choice. You can either read that marriage from this orary chart because it is related somehow in her own mind to the car breakdown, or she wouldn't have brought it up in the first place. And you can, and it's very interesting. Things like this happen. If a marriage is on the rocks, very often things like a car breakdown will symbolize it externally or some other kind of breakdown in the life. So they can be related and they can still be answered from that same chart. Other astrologers, well, you brought that up and it's like an hour into this reading, I'm going to set up a new horror. And, and you can do that too, if you wish. But uh, the thing I love about astrology, it's not just simply, yes, do it or no, don't do it. It's here's why. Here's why you should. And here's why you shouldn't. And here's something else to be on the lookout for and pay attention to, because if this happens in three days, then you'll know, blah, 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 blah. So we can get that specific with you. It's an amazing tool. So, you know, this brings up one more question, and that is, I know with some of us, we like, like people keep a lot of card decks around, right? Because they like to cast cards, tarot or whatever, a lot. And you ask different questions. And I think to some degree, depending on where we are in our journey, we're just not comfortable enough with hearing intuition throughout the day, for example, or trusting in our instincts. In fact, a lot of times we don't. I, that was my whole story. You know, I mean, like I'd make a, a particular decision and it would turn out as a disaster. Well, you have that happen a few times. You kind of get like, like, I'm not going to make any decision without being told what to do. So a lot of people might want to ask a question of the sky of horrorary or of their chart on a maybe too frequent basis. How do you determine what is best to consult the sky in time and space for an answer? Well, first of all, the querent has to have some direct input and effect on the situation. For example, you cannot ask Horary who is going to win, will so-and-so win the, the presidential election. You as a querent, 
your vote cannot possibly determine either way the election. It's an aggregate collective vote. So you don't have any direct relationship to who wins the presidency. And you can't expect Orary to answer that. It has to be a situation that directly involves the client. Now, it can be something about, is my daughter going to get divorced? Because that does have a direct input on the on the querent in some way. So that's a legitimate question. Uh, so I, that's the first thing. And the second thing, yes, I totally agree. When I was first starting out, I would ask ordinary questions about just passing ideas. And because they are just passing ideas or they're shallow questions or they're trivial questions, the horoscope is going to reflect that. You're not going to have much success with it. You do learn to, to only use it when it's really of significant importance to you or to the querent to ask in the first place. And um, orary charts themselves have certain rules before they can be read. They have to meet these certain conditions. They're called considerations before judgment. Uh, because the horoscope will tell you, I can't read this, and here's why. It's either too, it's premature, there are not enough elements in place for astrology to give you any kind of reliable answer, or for all intents and purposes, this situation is over, and there's nothing you really can do about it. So astrology can't really be of any assistance to you. So there are those conditions where you, astrology says you can't read me. But when you can, um, it has to be a, a question that's significant enough to you to have really ask it, not, not something trivial and superficial, because you'll get a trivial and superficial answer. One of the other things I've learned from your classes about the technique is once you've asked about this question, that's the answer. Don't keep coming back for more. That's very true. And especially beginners, when they get an answer they don't like, well, I'll just wait and ask it again in an hour. Well, that's playing games with astrology and playing games with your life, in a sense, and it's a superficial approach to it. So again, you're going to get superficial results, which don't look very uh, reliable, because in fact, it's the question that is, or the game that's being played. But yeah, when you ask a question, you'll get, if you get an answer from astrology, uh, that's the answer, unless you do something about it. And it always, always will suggest ways out of or around things if you want to take them. Sometimes people don't. I used to teach people, you know, if, if you're broke in life at any given moment, transiting Jupiter and transiting Venus will tell you where you can get money. You may not want to do it, but you can get it. Sometimes people are broke and you have Jupiter in the fourth house. Your family will own. Oh, I can't. I'd be, it would hurt my pride too much to ask. Well, Fine, that's your choice. But if you ask, you can get it. Or Jupiter or Venus might be in the 11th of friends. You can ask a friend for, and they'll give it to you. Oh, I couldn't do that. I don't want them to know I'm broke. Well, okay, that's your choice again. But there are always these alternatives, I think, that are shown by space time, by a horoscope. Yeah, this is really interesting. Okay, we keep I keep getting these additional questions because I think of my own experience with horary, and you're exactly right. There's this part where you come to the chart to say, I'm going to ask you to confirm what I want to do, right? Oh, dangerous ground. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Because then the shift for me, especially in working with you for a couple of years now, has been to trust the chart, trust the process, trust the tools, and come to the question with empty, neutral hands, asking truly for guidance, and then just having decided well in advance, I'm going to do whatever it says. I'm not going to argue if it, and that way you're holding your question loosely. You're not trying to get the chart to confirm what you want whole different approach, whole different dynamic, and a whole different way to live, too. That is so important. I just, uh, two days ago, had to decline a reading. A woman had written me asking if her husband was cheating on her. And uh, she wanted a, a full reading with me. And uh, I wrote her back and, and, and just said, look, this, this is an issue of trust. It doesn't matter what astrology says. If I tell you he is cheating, how, how is that going to affect you? Are you going to leave him or are you going to stay with him? If I tell you he's not cheating, how is that going to affect you? Will you trust him anymore? 
The issue is trust. And what you need if you want to save this marriage is a marriage and family, marriage and family counselor, and not for just a week or two, but to work through these issues that you have. That's the only, and she, she wrote me back and was very offended. And I reread my letter and it wasn't offensive at all. I said, I certainly didn't intend to be uh, offensive, but it's the only responsible and ethical thing that I can do. You don't need an astrologer or a psychic. You're wasting your time and your money. You need some marital counseling. Well, that's just the truth. She didn't want to hear it, but don't play with yourself and your marriage and don't play with astrology. That's a silly question. That's another point that I've really come to respect through your horary practicums, especially, is your own respect for what astrology is and what it is not. True. And thank you. <laughs> well, because it, there yeah, are clear it guidelines. Has, to me, it's simply the most profound philosophy and, and technique that I have ever known uh, for anything. And because it, it simply gives you a perspective on anything that you are involved in, that you experience in your life. It's a perspective. And if you study that, you glean all sorts of information about the situation and about yourself and about your choices. So I have nothing but awe for this incredible ancient system of living. Yeah, it's truly amazing. If we don't stop, we're not going to have anything to talk about in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, we will. <laughs> Try and shut me up. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Robert, thank you. This has been great. And this is just scratching the surface. We are going to come back with something on Horary because I would imagine a lot of you have horary questions and to this point and robert i know you would agree with me on this you guys we have this speak pipe thing on the funastrology.com website it's up on the top on the upper left and it's the orange box and you can ask robert questions we can't do specific charts and we can't do horary questions unfortunately but he and i are talking about some ways that we can do some of these things in the proper context but the Speak pipe questions are for general questions that everybody listening to this will get something out of. So I know you understand that, but we'd love to answer your questions about what all he's talking about. And yes, we are going to move forward with some horary things. So that's in the works. It's been discussed already. Robert, thank you again. Thank you, Thomas. And if you'd like to book a consultation with this guy, he is available. He is, his website is rglasscock, the number four site s-i-g-h-t dot com and if you go to the me tab there's a link to his email and you can ask if a reading for you is appropriate thank you so much for listening we'll be back on the next episode of old soul new soul with robert glasscock